Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. So today we're going to bring you a new and exciting collaborative effort with fellow YouTube content creators, DeBoss Garage. If you're not familiar with DeBoss Garage, then you must be living under a rock or something because they're a big channel, popular channel from Canada, and they do a lot of cool stuff over there. So we'll drop you a link, go check them out, tell them we sent you. They are now official schmoo fighters along with the rest of us. This episode, we're going to have a little bit different style. Somebody forgot to record. Somebody forgot to record this very special pump. I'm going to give you a very brief overview of what the customer's doing, what they requested, and then since I don't know enough about it, Tyler is going to tell you what it required, what went into satisfying their request. One of the builds happening on DeBoss Garage is a 1965 Fargo. And I don't know much about Fargos, but I think that was maybe the Canadian version of Dodge back in the day. If you know the story, drop us a comment and let us know. I believe this particular truck was originally powered by a two-stroke Detroit engine. Insert screaming Jimmy clip here. Uh, the crew over at DeBoss has opted to convert to a DT-466, legendary, famous, bulletproof engine. Their DT-466, they've rebuilt. He had some content rebuilding the engine, and their engine originally came with a P-3000, which is still a very robust and high-quality Bosch injection pump, but they wanted a P-7100. All I said was, sure, no problem, without knowing what that would really take, and then I gave him a work order and asked him if he could do it, and he was super excited. What did I get us into, and what did you do? How did you do it? Yeah, I was excited at first because we have some P7100 Navistar cores right here. Uh, further looking into it, looking at the pump type code, it's actually a left-hand drive pump instead of a right hand drive pump which is what the p7100s normally are after doing a couple weeks of digging for a camshaft for a left hand drive p7100 couldn't come up with anything at that point i talked to our fabulous machine shop and found that we had a core p3000 same thing that they have left hand drive pump i said here guys make this into a P7100 drive shaft. The main difference is that the bearings on both ends, normal bearings with races, whereas the P7100s, the front is a straight roller bearing and the back is kind of a two-piece roller, completely different from the P3000. So beefier. Yes, beefier, more robust, not gonna wear out. And typically with these, they'll wear into the bearing races enough that then you'll get in play in your drive shaft and that's one of the things we check for every time with these pumps. Once you go to the P7100 with the other bearings you don't really have to worry about that as much you just need spacing correct. We had to beef up the front end for the roller bearing we welded it up machined it down on the back end uh, we actually made a sleeve a press fit sleeve that goes over it because it has a retaining snap ring for that back bearing so we got that figured out, went to put it in the pump, crap, we don't have a center bearing that will work in it that rides in the center of the pump to absorb any shock from the plungers and to help support the camshaft. Back to the machine shop again, we had a P7100 bearing and we had a P3000 bearing and said, here, convert this into one. So after two tries, we got that figured out as well. RPMs and fuel that they were wanting, uh, we went with a 12 millimeter plunger, good one. It does have cutbacks at start, but it's pretty steep helix and we can get uh, quite a bit of fuel out of it without going crazy or going to the 13 millimeter plungers. They wanted some more RPMs in this thing, so we went with a light set of weights. 
that we cut down here in our machine shop as well. Maintain the factory spring kit in it to give it a little extra RPMs. We didn't get crazy with it with a 4000 governor spring kit or anything because you can hold those things wide open and they'll go forever. Some of the main differences as you can see here between the P3000. So this is actually mounted on the left side of the engine, driver side engine, supply pump mounting on this side, drive hub, and all your linkages are over here on the driver's side. Fuel inlet, fuel outlet, and oil inlet is right here on this pump. Did, did they make a left hand 7000? Yes they do, but they are few and far between and that's why I couldn't really find a, a camshaft for it. The piece 7100 that goes on the Navistar is on the right side of the engine, the passenger side. So supply pump and fuel is still on this right side, but all the governor stuff is on the right side as well. So that's really no good to us either. We actually used a main housing from one of these Navistar P7100s, modified it to have the oil inlet here as you can see with the red plug. Uh, we did have it machined originally for a supply pump to go on here, so we have plated that off. Um, as you can see, we don't have it, and they have a fast fuel system or electronic fuel system to supply their pump. Timing, all the timing and everything is over here on the right side. Well, we changed it over to the left side since they're gonna have to maintain their drive hub on their engine. We timed this, which is where this timing would be at TDC. We have this pin time like a Cummins P7100 at TDC as well. So when they go to mount this, we might have some questions on how to adapt our drive hub to it, but I can get that taken care of with a phone call or two. The drive hub from a 3000 will fit this pump. They have the same taper, the same uh, thread size. It is just different back in the bearing. So does this have a lock timing feature? No, it does not. It's got a timing plate here, but this one actually uses a pin going through your drive hub in order to lock into your timing plate to find your TDC, and that's how you would mount it from there. Lock time this through the pin, take the pump off, don't move anything take the hub off yep and then put the hub on here put your hub on here or put it on the gear where it was originally and then shove that pump on tighten the nut down yeah once you have that the engine at TDC when you're pulling this old pump you basically slap that one on at the same point line up your bolt holes and away you go we left the aneroid engaged in it it is set light so they'll get Max fuel a little earlier than a stock one would. That's adjustable. And the fuel plate is turned back a little bit from max fuel just to give them some leeway on where they want to live at, how much smoke they want to blow. So what was, do you remember the, the delivery spec of this? This one was 185 cc's and that engine is supposed to make 275 horse. Uh, so we turn that one up uh, about 230-ish and can get 260 with the barrels and plungers that are currently in it. And that's something they can crank yep. up on the engine? They can move the fuel plate once they get it set on the engine and can determine where they want it to ride. If, they, if they're not happy with the existing level of power? Yep. A fairly unique pump here, but uh, this is a robust model of pump in itself, is it not? I mean, is it this could have achieved this fuel delivery, right? Yep. Yep, very capable of achieving the same fuel delivery. Just has a couple extra quirks. And the, the 7000 is beefier. Yeah. No, just no doubt. Mostly the bearings and the flanges are the issue in the P3000, where you pretty well get away with that with the 7000. The uh, governor is... Yep. Virtually identical, right? These are RQV. On road governors. Yep, almost identical. So we could have accomplished it with this, but it is no doubt um, a little bit less robust pump. While this is doable, 
what's it cost? All of these custom modifications versus, you know, taking a stock one and cranking it up. Uh, if we went through just the P3000 and maybe put a bigger set of barrels and plungers or different size, we'd be about 2500 Uh With all the modifications we have in that and first time with some of those modifications, we had a little bit more expense in it, but I'd say five grand, 5500 If you have the need for a super expensive, crazy modified diesel fuel injection pump, We'll drop you Tyler's direct phone number in the comments below. You can reach out to him with all of your wild dreams. Uh, but seriously, if you guys do need something, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. We are a fair, capable, honest, long-standing organization, and we pride ourselves in providing a high-quality customer experience as well as a high-quality component. You know how to get a hold of us. We will be throwing in the obligatory area diesel rusty pause collaboration button for our new friends over at the boss garage and we'll also throw them standard issue hats gloves fender covers schmoo fighters shirts what have you and uh i reckon that's it thanks for watching